Hello everybody and welcome to Free Spirit TV, Information Beyond Mainstream. Today I'm very happy to present to you once again Karin Hützebaut. Karin comes from Belgium, is a psychotherapist, a criminologist, author on child sex abusers and child murderers, founder of ICMEC, the International Center for Molested and Abducted Children, as well as the founder of the network Time to Talk About It, which provides an online course with diploma named Victim and Criminal Profiling Academy Training Program. In this specialized training, one learns how to professionally work with abused victims as well as with sex offenders. For over 30 years, Karen has worked as a therapist for abused children and investigated pedophiles. Learn more right after the commercial. Hier noch eine Nachricht in eigener Sache. Free Spirit TV ist eines von mehreren Projekten des Free Spirit Bewusstseinstrainings. Dieses Training ist ein hervorragendes Konzept für Menschen, die einfach mehr vom Leben wollen. Wenn du dich nach etwas sehnst, sei es, dass du noch glücklicher sein möchtest oder reicher, gesünder oder nach einer tollen Beziehung, wenn du dich beruflich auf deine Vision konzentrieren und noch so einiges anderes verwirklichen möchtest, dann empfehlen wir dir von ganzem Herzen das Free Spirit Bewusstseinstraining. Du findest es unter www.freespiritinfo.com. Ah ja, und noch etwas. Da immer mehr alternative Kanäle im Internet unterdrückt werden, wissen wir nicht, wie lange wir dort noch senden können. Für den Fall, dass die uns das Licht abdrehen, sei vorbereitet und abonniere daher unbedingt unseren Newsletter auf freespirit-tv.ch. Danke und schön, dass es dich gibt. Hallo Karin, welcome back once again. Today in our virtual studio, I'm really happy to talk to you about your new project, about your new training and of course also about your interesting work with abuse victims and sex offenders. It's always a pleasure, Aline, to talk to you. You mm -hmm. are so professional and so on topic <laughs> and I'm very grateful that we have this uh, kind of news because yes. the mainstream, yeah, you know, I don't have to explain it to I. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> um, first question, what do you believe? Why do adults actually do what you're doing to the children? Is it a disease? Is it a mental disorder or what is it? Is it something else? Uh, first of all, it is not a disease. They try to sell it as if it is a disease. But if it is a disease, then uh, people would abuse children in plain sight. Mm. The fact that they know that it is illegal and they, and some of them know they are harming children, uh, they do it hidden in a hidden place. It means that they know perfectly what they are doing and why they are doing this. So no, it's not a disease, but the reasons can be uh, of various types. A uh, lot of them have been themselves victim of child sex abuse in their childhood, mm -hmm. which is not an excuse because Many people have been victims of abuse and do not abuse children. So um, that's one thing. And then um, others have a tendency to uh, destroy and harm others. And sometimes in combination with their education, uh, their fa family situation, uh, they harm the weakest. They will not harm somebody of their level or somebody who is stronger, they always take the most weak because they can't bear losing again. Mm -hmm. So they have to have this feeling of victory. But it, does, it, doesn't long, long, it doesn't last long, of course, because it, it always comes back. It's mm -hmm. bad self-esteem, negative self-esteem, whatever. But this can be treated, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So it is a choice. They choose uh, consciously to harm others. Mm -hmm. So it's not a mental disease? No. If I understand you correctly, no. it's a choice. It's a choice. And now you can say, yes, but psychiatrists say this and this. Mm -hmm. All this can be possible. But you know, uh, I'm working for over 30 years with child sex offenders, child killers uh, also. And all of them, after six months of therapy, you know, when, when the, confi the confidence is installed, and I do not judge, I'm not a judge, I will judge what they do, I will not judge the person. They all admit that it was a choice, choice, all of them. That's interesting. 
Mm -hmm. And why is it absolutely necessary to work with both parties in that kind of crime? Yeah, indeed. In this kind of crime, you have two people. You have the one who choose to offend and harm somebody. It's, it's a conscious choice, as I said. And then you have the other party who is the victim and uh, who has no choice at all. That uh, party is chosen. So the one chooses the, and the other party is chosen. The one who choose, he makes an active move. Okay, he has been fantasizing about it. He has been uh, thinking it over, uh, how he would do it, which victim he would choose. So this is very active. In the meantime, the victim does know nothing at all. And all of a sudden, it is chosen. It is not as something like a robbery in your house and they stole your television. Here we are talking about two parties uh, who are involved in a, in a horrific crime. Mm. And you will actually choose to work with both. Absolutely. I, mm -hmm. I mean, if I work with child sex offenders for six months, I start to believe them all. Mm -hmm. They are such good manipulators, such good liars. They always find excuses to justify what they did. And I can assure you, if you only work with offenders and you don't hear the other party in this, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. I, at the moment, I had an offender, and he, let's call him Walter, and he said, but the child liked it. You know, it was in the beginning when I was working with them, and I thought, who am I to say that the child cannot like being touched and, and, and being, having the feeling to be loved? And having the attention, who am I to decide what a victim will feel? So I was a bit confused about that. And I said, how do you know that? How do you know that the child liked it? And he said, the child was laughing, giggling. Okay. So, okay. I put it on hold. And then a few weeks later, I saw the victim. Um, and she said, uh, I said, well, I'm going to ask you a very difficult question, but mm -hmm. don't worry. I almost heard it all. So, you know, and I'm not judging you. Tell me what you did the moment um, this offender started to touch you. And she was, she was really almost panicking. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw guilt. And I thought, how can a child of six years of age be guilty of something an adult chooses to do to it. And then it took some minutes and then she said, I, I was giggling, I, I was laughing. And immediately she said, but I, I was so ashamed. I didn't know what to do. I, I was afraid. I was confused. Mm. So what you see then is that the perception of the offender is right. Yeah. But the interpretation mm. is very wrong. Yeah, very and wrong. And this mm. you cannot learn in universities. You can't mm. learn it anywhere, but in practice. Yeah. And that's why that's one of the examples uh, I, I give you. I can give you another mm -hmm. one if you want to, mm -hmm. uh, where I had a bus driver, about 45 he was, I think, and he was about two meters high. And... Um, he was trying to explain to me, but listen, if the child wouldn't have liked it, it would have said no. Mm -hmm. I said, how, how old was your little daughter? Well, five, he said. And then I came from, my, from behind my desk and I said, okay, cop, uh, go sit on your knees. He went down and um, I said, lower, lower, mm -hmm. you know, because the child of five is not that, yeah, lower, lower. Put your bottoms on your heels from your feet, okay? And then he was sitting in front of me and I was wearing a trouser and I said, open my trouser. And I looked down at him and he was in shock. He said, come mm -hmm. on, this isn't that difficult. You know how to open a trouser, don't you? And he was really that far mm -hmm. from me. At, in fact, where normally his penis would be. And 
It took 10 minutes and he was turning and turning. And I said, come on, man, just open my trousers. It's not difficult. And then he started crying and he was completely on the floor. And he said, but, but what are you asking me? I said, why don't you say no? Hmm. Because just on before, and he said, the child didn't say no. And that's the, that's the problem with the prevention campaigns. Mm -hmm. They are focusing on little children. I swear you, I did expertise on men in prison who raped three-month-old babies. Tell me how a baby can say no. And anyway, it's up to the adult to say no. Mm. There, you see, never campaigns. Never. Although no. there should be pictures around the everywhere mm. uh, saying, sir, if you are caressing your child, is it for you or for the child? Mm -hmm. yep. Because then I know what this does, this kind of uh, prevention. The offenders start to feel they are watched. Mm -hmm. And now the guilt and the blame is put on the victims. It is not their responsibility. Mm. And it is, they are not guilty of this kind of crimes. It is up to the adult to say no. That's why I made these pictures. Very mm -hmm. speaking, not offending, but those who, who abuse children, they know. Yeah, I they understand. Not. They are yeah. watching me. And don't underestimate the influence of uh, kind of marketing or prevention. Mm. Remember, when you're on the autobahn, on the, the highway, you see this, this big, big... Uh, uh, cardboards with have you put your safety belt mm -hmm. you know and drinking is this you know all these warnings we get but it helps doesn't it yeah why don't we see adult men and under it it's up mm. to you to say no don't put anything about child abuse just it's up to you to say no those for whom it is designed mm -hmm. they'll know yeah that's true that's a really important point yeah yeah and so my i've been at universities all over the place you know it's a frame it's a frame and it's good uh, but it's like a house you have the walls you have the openings for the windows and that's it it's up to you to organize the house to paint the house and all that well that's what i'm doing i have the frame Mm -hmm. And I start uh, decorating my house. And that's what I do when I, I what I've been doing for 30 years. Mm -hmm. I ask the offenders, I ask the victims, who, who can better know what this does than those two people? Yeah. It's actually not, lo logical, right? The logical it's approach. It's completely logical. Uh, the, the professors, and I don't want to blame them all, but... I think 99% of them never spoke to a victim, mm -hmm. let alone speaking to a child sex offender. So how can they know? Just theory yeah. given from one to the other? Fruit, mm -hmm. for instance. It's all in the fantasies of women, hysterical women. And this, this is still taught yeah. in thought. So in thought, all yeah. universities in mm -hmm. the world. Uh, and then I still don't talk about um, Kingsay, Alfred Kingsay, under, under the name of science. Again, mm -hmm. uh, he, he was funded by the American government and especially the Rockefeller Foundation um, to examine the orgasm in children between three months and 15 years. Now, almost all of those working there were child sex offenders. Oh, my God. All of them. It has been revealed. Mm. And he based his studies. Nobody knows who these children were, but there are thousands of them who have been used for these experiments that lasted years. Nobody knows where they are, mm. who they are, because it's all secret, of course. Uh, they are in the archives, but uh, this institution refuses to... Uh, to to make it Open public. Up. Mm. And uh, Al, uh, King Say based his study on a child killer and a child sex offender, a serial rapist of Germany. Mm -hmm. 
who, who wrote diaries, and many of them do write diaries where they, where they write down in, the, in the, the smallest details what they do to children and how these children react. And so Kingsley used this material for his so-called study, and these studies are still taught in all universities. So don't, don't tell me this is not mm. a problem. No, of course not. I mean, it would be kind of naive to believe that actually, right? Yeah, I mean. it, it was a bit the, the beginning of the globalism. Mm. Because it is everywhere. And now you can say, but why would they do that? Why would they want children to be abused, mm. raped, tortured? Because they become the best slaves for the system. Yeah. When you break a child young enough, it is yours mm. for the rest of its life. That's what they say. Until mm. they have the right, um, the right skilled people to get them out. And that's mm. not that difficult. Mm -hmm. You just have to know it. It's always like this. You know, it's yeah. like, like a hologram. <sighs> There's a mouse in the hologram. And then you are watching. What is it? Where is it? I can't see it. I can't see it. But all of a sudden, you see it in the mm. whole world, and you can never unsee it anymore. Yeah. So it is not that difficult to heal victims. Anyway, mm. Mm. their preven the, the prevention campaigns, you know, the campaigns they keep is, oh, these poor victims, they, they, are, they are bruised and broken for their lives. That is not true. I abducted myself, children from psychiatric institutions, got them in therapy, very harsh because, you know, in a mental health hospital, they can do whatever they want because it's all because of their trauma. Mm. And you have to be a bit harsh, yes, at the beginning. But all of them uh, finished their studies or married, have children, did mm. universities, so it is a lie, another lie. Mm -hmm. Why? To keep people um, in line. Yeah, in this victim, victim state, right? In the victim for, state. For all their yeah. life. Yeah. yeah, because when you're a victim, you know, it's never your fault. I had, mm. I had victims here who said, uh, oh yeah, well, my exam was not that good. That was one that I abducted from a mental health hospital. <laughs> and I said, how come? Well, you know, well, with all uh, I've gone through, I said, no, this is not because of you have been a victim. It is because you didn't study. Mm -hmm. Because many, many people have gone through this and did make their lives. So stop being a victim. You are still a victim now if you keep on going being a victim from that abuser. Right. Get mm -hmm. rid of him and start your freaking life it's mm. yours yeah that's an important point right to so for the victim to know that actually there is a way out of that absolutely. stage absolutely always it's not, yeah it's not difficult mm. it can be a bit scary especially because i see a lot of adults officially the, the percentage are 25 percent of the adults have been abused in their childhood mm -hmm. i can guarantee you it is over 50 percent yeah. So again, governments are lying. Once again, yeah. And don't forget, many of these victims are in psychiatric and mental health mm. hospitals having medication yeah. who is, that is killing them. Yeah. They gain 30 kilograms of, of uh, weight because of this uh, medication and then they feel even less sure of themselves and they, mm. they feel more bruised and more disgusting. Mm. Disgusting is not in their, in their camp. It is up to the abuser who mm -hmm. has casted about himself. He and chose that, to do it. Yes, and I think that's also why you actually take a different approach for the victim and for the offender if you yes. treat them, right? Yeah. So how, is it, how do, they treat, do you treat them differently? Well, to start with, with offenders, mm -hmm. to start with the offenses themselves, okay? Uh, they have to go through almost all models of the training. But when people get this training, they have a workbook for each of the models. 
Mm-hmm. So and and it's a workbook, so you can you st- can start working with an offender immediately on the problems he causes. Mm-hmm. After that, after that, because the most important uh, item here is to stop them from offending, right? Right to mm-hmm. harm people. After that, we start working on the victim within the offender. Mm-hmm. And as I explained in the training, there are five big forms of child abuse, um, psychological abuse, mm-hmm. uh, f- for instance, um, locking children up in the basement and they don't know, in the dark, they don't know how long they will be there, they're frightened, they, they, and, and very often without food or drink, mm-hmm. drinks. There is mental abuse. Uh, and that is, you're ugly. You're so stupid. Nobody will ever love you. These are the messages that these children get mm-hmm. at the beginning. They are programmed with it. Then you have the physical abuse, hitting, uh, burning children with cigarettes, with irons, with uh, just physical abuse. Then you have um, one or both parents or caretakers a uh, victim of um, uh, addictions to meds, medication, mm-hmm. uh, alcohol, um, or drugs, mm-hmm. which is and this is a very underestimated uh, uh, part of child abuse, because these children never know in what state their parent will be. It depends of how much booze right. they had. They they also are left with a lot of responsibility for Mm -hmm. the adult instead of the other way around. Um, And then you have the sexual abuse. And the sexual abuse is the the most severe form of abuse. Why? Because in sexual abuse, you often have several of the other levels included. Uh, I see. Offenders Mm -hmm. often, uh, when they had too much to drink, their brakes are going loose. Uh, and that's then the excuse, yeah, but I drank too much and as if there is an excuse anyway. Mm. Or uh, they, the children are somewhere abused in the basement or in the attic where nobody knows where they are. Um, then there is, of course, very often physical harm mm-hmm. to the child when we are talking about rape. Um, and then the message these children get is, you're worth nothing. You're a sex object to me. So you have then all five of the forms in one victim, in one act. Yeah. And it is known that when people are victim of at least three of the five forms of abuse, that they, uh, they suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. And this can be on long term. Yes. But that doesn't mean that it can't be restored or healed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always a solution, right? So when you're working with the offender, um, you work with a contract of non-confidentiality. What is that contract and why do you use it only with the offender? Of course, only with the offender because he's responsible for the harm he did to start with. It was a choice and it is the uh, secrecy around all this that makes that we can't stop them. Mm. So if I am having somebody in, normally they are sent by the justice departments um, and they are under probation because from themselves they don't come. They don't think they have a problem. Right. So you have to force them. Mm. Um, And then I do the following up, which takes at least 18 months, uh, at least one hour a week. Um, And I do make... um, a report every three months on where we are, what the problems still are, wh- why and how come this person has become an offender. It is important that the people involved know this to mm-hmm. start with the Justice Department. Yep. And, and that's the big problem with the secrecy. Uh, um, psychologists, psychiatrists, they are their umbrella their umbrella is open and, oh, but, you know, the secrets of my profession and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is for me unacceptable because while you are treating one victim 
the offender is making another 150 new victims during his sexual um, uh, active life, being from 15 to 70 years of age. Mm -hmm. So why would I clean with the tap open? I will not do it. So the contract of uh, non-confidentiality stipulates that everything uh, shall and will be uh, uh, shared with um, the Justice Department, police, office, police uh, departments if necessary, the victim, the lawyer of the victim, his lawyer, and uh, when on trial, it is just open. And they have to sign this. And mm -hmm. when they do sign it, it is not really a problem. But I will never betray them. That's something else. Mm. But I will make full reports every three months so the probation officer can see, oh, but I'm the only one doing this. Mm -hmm. I don't know of anybody else doing this. I've been doing this for my whole life. But then again, I'm completely independent. Yeah, that's a good thing, right? Yeah. I I'm mean, it makes so much sense to do it this way. I, I can't understand why no. you wouldn't do it that way. I mean... No, because these people are taught to do differently. Mm. Students are taught to do differently. And they treat, because they don't know anything in universities about treating offenders, right. they, they treat the offenders as if they were victims. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a big mistake, my God. Because immediately they go into the role of, oh, poor me, poor right. victim. I'm a victim. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, I've been a victim and we will treat it separately, but start with you're here because you're an offender. Right, that's, uh, that's also one thing you do, you treat that separately. You treat it too, yes. yeah, but absolutely. in a separate section, yeah. so yeah. to speak. Yeah, yeah. when, when they, are, they are gone through all this, these are all these models, mm -hmm. workbooks, and they have... You know, it's hard working, you know. It's not just being here an hour, an hour and a half or two hours uh, telling stories. No, no, they have tasks to do. After mm -hmm. each uh, chapter, there's a list with questions and they take it with them at home. Mm -hmm. And when they come back the next week, we go over their answers. And there I can see when, if they evaluate yeah. in the right direction or not. For instance, something offenders are forbidden to say really forbidden is yeah i know it happened mm -hmm. i get outrageous from this it happened mm -hmm. they are completely, yeah. this is not something that is happening mm -hmm. i mean there can be a storm that is happening an earthquake a flood that are things we have no control over and that are things that happen right here in your case you did it mm -hmm. so never say again it happened from now on you're gonna say I did it. Right, so I taking did over responsibility for the yes, actions. That's really important. Absolutely. Mm. How do you want to put people back on track if they, they don't even take the responsibilities of what they've done to a child? And, and even in other cases. Yeah. You can, can't do anything if no, you don't take responsibility. No. So that's and why I think it's really important. Especially if you treat them as victims. Mm. Oh, poor me. And then the whole family is gathering around the offender. Oh, poor you. Come on. Let's stay a bit earthed. I mean, feet on the yeah. Feet on the ground. In reality. Yeah. And, but yeah. I have to say that mm. without the specialized treatment, 97% of offenders relapse mm -hmm. with an average of three to four days after they left prison. Poor. That's so it crazy. is costing yes. society a tremendous amount of money for zero result. Mm. I never had one relapse in my life. Never. Wow. Why? Also, not only because of the treatment, but also because we make a bond. Mm -hmm. And I have, I have child sex offenders who call me sometimes after 10 years saying, oh, Miss, it's about, I'm in trouble. And I say, what's the matter? Uh, I was working in the garden, it's so hot, and, I, and this fantasy started again. Mm -hmm. Immediately, I say, you come now. Yep. I don't care from where they are, you come now, I'll make place. Before they act out on mm. children. But they know this, they know this, and so they feel confident. Mm, that's good. But most of them say, after they finish their treatment, uh, 
they write letters to me, how they are doing in life and all that. But most of them say, I have no idea why I was attracted to children. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I got there. Hmm. Now, these are the right things right. To, be, to happen. Yes, of course. And this has nothing to do with me. It has to do with maybe my, um, my kind of approach to them. Mm -hmm. yep. Just very down to earth. Mm. Sometimes I have to go to prison because there's a trial coming on for gruesome fa facts. And then the lawyer calls me and said, well, he, he refuses to talk to a psychiatrist. Can you go? Mm -hmm. Okay, then I go and then I come, then I am waiting in this, these little boxes in prison. Mm -hmm. They bring them in. I don't know these people. And then I say, but let's, let's say, let, Peter, what's the matter with you? So they, they watch me. I'm not the psychiatrist sitting there. I'm mm. me. I'm a human being and he's a human being too. What, what do you mean? So why do you refuse to talk to psychiatrists? Mm. Your trial is in four days. And then they start talking. They start, I can, I can have them talk and say everything. Then they say, have you seen the reports of the psychiatrist? I said, no, I don't look at that. I first want to talk to you. But they write down things I never said. And then you start talking. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what are they writing down? They say that I did this, 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 and I didn't do that. So I say, what did you do then? Mm -hmm. And then it comes. Mm -hmm. So the, the first seconds are the most important. Yeah. It's okay. also to do with body language and all that. Yes, know? of course. And you know, have so many, you have so much experience with that, right? To be so clear and down to earth and just straightforward with them. Straightforward. And not, um, no, treat them like a little baby. Life is a lie. Mm. They act as if they are the best friend of the neighborhood and all that, knowing that they abuse the children of the neighborhood. So if they can go back and live in truth, they have something to lose. Yeah. Respect of others, respect of themselves, for themselves. Uh, very often, when you, know, when you have a, a, a criminal record, it's very difficult to find mm. a job. Even there, I go out of my way to talk with their former employer to, and with my file and say, look, we are working at that. These mm. are his problems. And they get a the chance. Mm -hmm. You know, so don't stay in your little box. Yeah. Help them find a good job. If they have a good job and they have a good income and maybe a relationship, they have many things to lose. Yeah. And then they will get better even more and yeah. stay away from their... Yes. ...their did yes. before, right? So. Yeah, but all this is also teached in the training. Mm -hmm. uh, a job that they have to make a crossover is a teacher. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, so let's talk about your training anyways. Um, do you need a degree to participate in your training? No. I prefer no degree. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are people with degrees who are very down to earth mm -hmm. and uh, who can put aside the kind of indoctrination they had um, how to work with child sex offenders and also victims. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are good... I have many of them who said I, I did university but you know it didn't help me in anything and then they see interviews I had and then uh, they go to the website and they say wow this is so down to earth this is what I'm looking for because it's coming from the heart mm -hmm. not from the brain yeah. you know I, 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 you, you can't trap me with protocols and <laughs> no sometimes I have people who come straight from their job and then they, I know they have to be here for an hour, two hours, and I know they have not eaten. Mm -hmm. Then I give, them, they, I give them a plate with spaghetti, whatever I ate that day. I make one more, and then we sit here in my office, and we, we are talking while they are eating. <laughs> so, come on, let's just be human amongst yeah. each other. And this, this gives a tremendous bond with your, with your offender, mm -hmm. but also victims. Yeah. So no, no, no degree is required. Mm -hmm. uh, people have to be down to earth, at least 21 
years of age mm -hmm. because that's when the brain has developed well developed enough yeah um and they it is okay when people have been victims of child sex abuse to work as a therapist it is absolutely no problem but mm -hmm. first they have to work on the third workbook to heal themselves of their traumas mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense yes yeah. they have to be themselves okay they can work with a psychologist with the book if they want to but they can do it themselves first mm -hmm. and then go through all the other models and i have one for men who can work on themselves to to heal from trauma but also for women mm -hmm. because there is a difference although they say we are all genderless which is <laughs> again another lie another lie uh, uh, yeah. Crazy. Uh, yeah no that is mm. absolutely not i have had people who applied and i'm very very harsh on this uh and Derek, i wanted the motivation why do you want to work mm -hmm. with child sex offenders and offenders and then sometimes you see i'm gonna teach them how to do it uh-huh Mm -hmm. Not from this point, no. Mm -hmm. You are, you are, we, this authority imposed on somebody gives the opposite effect. Yeah. Yes. So I'm sorry, but then you're not, you're not. Um, it's the wrong intention then. It's the wrong intention. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it can't be that an offender who is in treatment feels worse and worse and offends more and more children because he's not going to turn himself against his therapist because this is an authority. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so they are trapped, and, but they are, this anger is there, this, this frustration is there, and somebody's going to pay. Mm -hmm. So children are in danger. Yeah, that's not cool. I will not allow this. No, no <laughs> that wouldn't be the purpose. Mm. But what actually is the purpose of this high skill training that you created? Well, working with, uh, working with child sex offenders, restoring as much victims as possible in mm -hmm. a human way, mm -hmm. not from, you know, I am a commissioner in an international tribunal and I'm there and, I'm did, and I have this diploma. That doesn't matter. I mean, you have to, you have to watch the results of somebody's mm -hmm. work. And I think the biggest result in my case is that I never had somebody who relapsed. Mm. Yeah, that's that really great. That is the goal. Yeah. And I even, I have confrontations in my office with, it's always very emotional, even yeah. for me, uh, between, I believe that. Offenders, yeah. mm. between offenders and victims. And, you know, sometimes it's, you know, I have my tissues here, even for myself, because... Mm. Not long ago, a month ago, I had somebody um, who was in therapy for a year and a half. And then the trial still had to be done in this case. And then several victims wanted a confrontation with him <laughs> in my office. Mm -hmm. And one of them, Joke, she was so upset and she said, why? She, first, she has been here next to him on my office listening to the to the therapy we were having she was observing me she was looking at him she saw the tasks he did i read them she was able to look into the file it was in front of her mm -hmm. and you know at one point she said you know michael i forgive you mm -hmm. and a flood of tears came out of his eyes he was he never thought that one of the victims would forgive him. He couldn't talk anymore. Then you touched his soul. Yeah. And he, will, he never will want to lose that feeling of, wow, some, she forgave me for what I did. And she even took him in her arms and he was sobbing, sobbing. Mm. And then you restore. Yeah, that's amazing. And that are things that are teached in this training. To feel comfortable, mm -hmm. even when you have to listen to the most 
gruesome acts. Sometimes uh, child sex offenders have to write down their most favorite uh, fantasies about children. And then I, I teach it in this training. Okay, now you've written this down. Good. Now you're going to read it out loud. Mm -hmm. So they can hear. First they saw, then they hear it. And then, okay, now we're going to put a virus into your fantasy because, you know, in fantasies, everything goes well. Mm. You no, know? I, I took the, 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 the child of the neighbor. She was running around. She's five. I bring her inside. My wife is not there. I put her on the table, the kitchen table. I uh, undress the child and uh, stop, stop. Okay, you're on, the, you're on the verge of raping that child, right? Okay, imagine all of a sudden the front door opens and your wife is there and the police and cameras are filming. You're there with your, your trousers on, on your heels with the child naked in front of you and everybody, neighbors, everybody's looking through the front door. Oh my God. Never again he can use that fantasy. Yeah. Because each time he comes to the point of, okay, and now I'm going to read them, he will think, oh God, no, I can't. Mm -hmm. Block, block, block. All these things are teached. Mm -hmm. We will never find that anywhere. No, I don't believe that. No. <laughs> yeah. In this training. That's, yeah, that's a really interesting approach. Mm. And it works. That's the most Actually, important thing, right? And the main thing is to stop them from abusing. Yeah. And it's not enough because, you know, society is very, very simple. There are three things society wants. First, mm -hmm. the punishment for the offender. Mm -hmm. Second, he has to uh, uh, repair the damages done, if possible. Because if the child is dead, you can't do it. But not only to the victims, but also towards society. When a child is hurt, a whole society is hurt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the third point is uh, uh, preventing relapse. Yeah. That's all. It's not that difficult, is it? No. But they have to go to jail. Mm. Why? Because that is 70% of the healing of a victim, mm -hmm. especially when they are still children. Because yeah. it's the bad one who goes to jail. Right, that's important too. Yeah. And you put the blame where it belongs. Mm -hmm. But the offender, it's also very important that he is the criminal and he knows it. Mm. And for the victim, because this is what we see most of the time within, with, in victims, they feel guilty of a crime they are not guilty of because this is part of the manipulation of the offender. Mm. You came to see me. You didn't say no. No, 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 no. You're the adult. You're supposed to know the law. You're supposed to follow the law. If you uh, trespass that law, you will, you will pay. Now, I have many offenders that have to pay for the treatment of the victims. Mm -hmm. Instead of courts and thousands of euros uh, or dollars to pay to the victim, a child of four and the family then buys a family, new family car. Mm. No. Doesn't no. work. Yeah. No. It's not. They give Helpful. me, mm. yeah, each month they have to give me the proof from the bank account that they paid for the therapy for the child. Mm -hmm. So mm. there's not, no more abuse on this either. Yeah. That's it's good. simple, isn't it? Yeah, it's very simple. But there's so many things in this training. Mm. When you, then you say, yeah, of course, why don't we do this? Mm, yeah, it seems so logical when, one, when you hear it, is, it right? It is yeah. logical, but there's nothing yeah. more difficult than simplicity, is there? Yes, that's true too. <laughs> and how is it built up, the training? How much time does it take to get your diploma? Oh, you take the time you need. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people who uh, paper model. Mm -hmm. There are people who take the whole uh, 10 models. Uh, but they can do it on their own tempo, their, mm -hmm. their own rhythm. Oh, Some do two models a month, which is much. Mm -hmm. uh, so we started in July, and I have no one who's, who finished 
I'm, I'm now reading because there is an exam at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, with each model, you get a certificate that you attended the model. Uh, at the end, you also get um, um, a video uh, where you can see how I work with offenders. Of course, the offenders are filmed from the back. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I don't want them to, be, to, to lock themselves up, which is not difficult for this moment, but okay, in their houses because they are afraid somebody will recognize them. Mm -hmm. We are not in that stage yet. That will come. It will take some years, but it will come that people uh, know you are a child sex offender and we, we are watching you. Mm -hmm. And that they can live normally into a community. Yeah. That time will come. But we are not there yet. Absolutely not. Mm. Um, it is very, very down to earth. So you have the certificate. You have the workbook. For each model, you have the mm -hmm. work. Uh, you can work with, you can start your own practice. We help even mm -hmm. building that practice because there are no, no sufficient skilled people to work with offenders and victims. So I still have 13,000 emails to go through from people crying for help. Oh my God. Okay. Uh, so I can delegate them to people mm. who finished the 10 models, ah, very good. Uh, who made an exam. It is not an easy exam. Then they get their diploma and they can start working. Mm -hmm. They just have to notice us. Okay, I start working. Um, I prefer, to be honest, that people start their own business. Mm -hmm. Because I have some who are in, uh, in the system. And there's even one woman in Australia who... Is, on, is suspended because she used my book. Oh, good. Okay. Where was she working? Great. Where was she working then? It was As in a Australia, a mental health hospital. In a mental health mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was for a victim. Mm -hmm. And she was working with that victim in the, the hospital. And no, it had to be their rules or no mm -hmm. rules. Mm -hmm. But I would like to see the results of these people uh, with their rules of keeping victims in the victimhood. Yeah. I would like to see the results. For me, it's about results and happy people. Mm. People feeling at home with yeah. themselves. We see actually the results, right? At the moment, how it is. So many victims. Yeah, so our, many our, our, complete, I mean, our complete society is so, so harmed. Yeah. And they, you know, they had 40 years of time and even longer to do it right be it uh, childcare, be it uh, uh, mental health hospitals, what are the results besides earning a lot of money, mm. costing a lot of money on society and all broken, broken people. Mm. We cannot allow this anymore. So, um, of course, it's okay if it is allowed to work in a mental health hospital with the training mm -hmm. they get, it's okay. Absolutely. Maybe mm. they can teach other people around them then how yeah. to do it. That would but be um, the best thing to do is just start your own mm. practice. And you can do it in an office, which is difficult now, but you can, I recommend people the first meeting to have it live with somebody. Mm -hmm. Then you go to a hotel, you, you, you rent one office for one day and you see four or five new clients for the first time so that there is that bond. Mm -hmm. And from then off, you can do it by Skype. Yeah, that works too. Can you explain actually each one of these modules you have for us? Yes, the first one is, um, uh, is a model about am I, do I have the right degree? Am I skilled enough? Am I the right person to do this? And there you also have parts of history. History, mm -hmm. how, did, how did we come where we are now? How come we are in this situation? There are, in this one, no tasks. It's just very informational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it's also said, a uh, degree is okay, but it is better to not have a degree and start from... A blanco level, mm. clean, yeah, okay? But it's not obliged. Then the second one is for 
at adult men who have been hurt as a young little boys and to help them heal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a meant for the therapist if he wants to heal himself first and then when it is, is done to work with uh, adult men who are suffering in their relationships, in their work, in their life from the consequences of child sex abuse or other forms of abuse. The third one is for women. Mm -hmm. hurt women, hurt little girls, insecure women. And insecure does not always mean submissive. Mm -hmm. There are women where, when you observe them, they are very authoritar authoritarian. Yeah. But in fact, it hides grief. Mm -hmm. Because that's one of the things that go through all the models. What is anger? Anger is uh, transformed grief. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, grief is a passive feeling. When you lose somebody and um, the person has died, you have grief, but you can't do anything about it. You have to undergo that feeling. It's a passive feeling. Uh, there are children who have not been protected by their parents or others, and they are abused, and they feel grief, confusion, but there's nobody there to help them out. Now, some of them stay in this grief forever mm. and it becomes bitterness. And bitterness is frozen grief. Yeah. Others are able to transform that grief into anger and act out. Mm -hmm. Not only via child sex abuse, but also climbing to the top of a company and bullying everybody. Mm -hmm. You see, and that's what, you see, that's a good man too, of course, but uh, this one also uh, shows that women who are very authoritarian often are very, very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. It's a coping mechanism. It's a coping them. mechanism and they try to hide that they are so vulnerable. Uh, you can work on it and just be a good boss mm. without have to bully others or um, demeaning others or uh, humiliating others. Right. You don't need that. Then um, the next one is for children. Mm -hmm. Children from 6 to 12 years of age who have been victim of abuse. Parents can do this at home. Uh, they can uh, buy the book and give it to the psychologist to work with the child on the abuse. And it explains everything. Who are abusers? Well, it can be grandpa. It can, it can even be grandma. It can be the neighbor. It can, neighbor. It can be the nice ice school man. Uh, it can, you know, so they can be everywhere. So all this is explained on a child level. And they have to do tasks also in it. And they have their own space in, the, in this book where they can get rid of the anger, the, the grief, the, the, the confusion. They can make drawings in it. They can, you know, they have their space in mm -hmm. it. Then we start with the offenders. The fifth one is, uh, who am I and why am I here? Most, most of the offenders don't even know who they are. Mm -hmm. So we start teaching them and we go through the whole workbook who they are, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, what we can do to reverse the weaknesses into strength. Uh, but also uh, the snowman. Um, I made a drawing of a snowman, you know, the three balls. And the upper level is your rational thinking. Then the, the, the middle ball is your feelings and emotions. And then the, the ball, the, the under ball, is everything that has to do with sexuality. In a normal human, to function well and feel good, this has to be fluent between the three balls. What we see is with victims, who still are, are not offenders, or maybe never will, but so we, we see it as well in victims as in offenders, 
that the, the second ball is bruised or damaged or even completely broken. Mm. For those who, who it is completely broken, we should separate them from our society. And there is, in the next model, we see uh, sympathy and compassion. Because many of these adults who abuse children, um, and that's the biggest, biggest lie in our world, is saying that psychopaths have no empathy. I had exams in California about uh, psychopathy, and I went in discussion with the jury, mm -hmm. saying that they have much more empathy than the average person. And they were oh. shocked. How so? Because people confuse empathy with compassion. Mm -hmm. They have empathy. They know how to hurt you, how to humiliate I you, see. Yeah. how to destroy you, mm -hmm. because they went to that. Mm -hmm. What they lack is compassion. compassion. Yeah, that's different. Mm -hmm. And that's completely different. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, they would feel guilty about the murder they right. committed, you know, and they don't feel guilty. Um, so that's a model who teaches uh, the offenders to feel empathy and compassion. So, for instance, then they have, I think I have here some, I still haven't had time to read it because it's a lot of work afterwards too. Um, for instance, they have to find cases in the newspapers, whatever, and they have to cut it out and then describe. Hold on a minute, I'm gonna take some. Mm -hmm. It's all on my desk, but I have to go through it. Um, they have to describe what they feel. And it doesn't have to be always a sexual crime. It can be an accident, it can be mm -hmm. a, a fire somewhere, it, whatever. They have the choice to gather a newspaper things. Okay, here it is. So these are notes I take. Mm -hmm. see? Then, where are all his tasks? He, he's very good at his task, this man, but, you know, he doesn't feel it. Yeah. He, he doesn't, it, it doesn't go into the feeling area. He knows that what he's doing is terribly wrong. Mm -hmm. Intellectually, he knows. Oh, but he I cannot. already filed it somewhere, I think. Uh, yeah, intellectually, he knows mm -hmm. this is so, so wrong. Oh, here it is. Okay. You see? These are, for instance, this is a page with questions, and mm -hmm. I make some notes to clarify it a bit. Then, here you see uh, question 4.14. This is an answer, it's a second, this, then the next, and the next. Um, and then you have here all the articles he, he, mm -hmm. he cut out in newspaper, many, you know. Uh, this is about uh, a bike, a bicycle, a biker who has been run over by a car. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, then, for instance, this is... Uh, younger people are shouting, you a dirty lesbian to a woman and hit her. So he, mm -hmm. he cut it out because mm -hmm. it touched him. Uh, so he, he, had, <laughs> you know, he had many. He had the chance to... And then he is discussing them in the tasks. Mm -hmm. So I can see, I can see where he, on what level he is. He's standing up. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in this case, I also found the victim of almost 30 years ago. And his excuses were, yeah, but you know, he already, this boy already didn't go to school. And he, he stole items from people. I mm -hmm. said, because of you. Because yeah. of what you did. So that gives you an excuse to abuse that little boy of 12. Then they are shocked. So you mm -hmm. see, they, they are not even aware of the, in the beginning. In the beginning. Of, yeah. And then it gets more and more with yeah. time. They Absolutely. And then, I, 
yeah. Mm-hmm. After a year, I found him. Mm-hmm. He was in prison in Portugal. But okay, I found him. And uh, even after 30 years, no, this, this man went completely wrong in criminal activities because he felt so bad about himself. And so I confront the offender with him. What do you think now? I found that man. He is now 42. He was 12. And still his life is ruined. Mm. So now he's going to pay for the uh, restoration of this man. When I had this man on the phone, <laughs> it was from prison. But okay, it was Portugal. Uh, uh, it was difficult because I, I, I can't see him. I, I, I don't know. I never saw him in real. So mm-hmm. I said, listen, I'm going to talk about something that it will not be easy, especially when you're not by the phone and you don't know me. But um, it's something about a very long time ago. Now, it is really a much show, you know. He started crying. Mm-hmm. He said, my God, no, no. There is, has not been one day in my life that I have not been thinking of it. And I was never, ever able to talk about it to anyone. That's crazy. Yeah, and there are so many amongst us like this. And as long as the blame is on them mm. by our governments and our I, I can't explain it in another way, Aline, than this is meant to be. Yes. It is not possible that nobody mm. would know what I know or see what I see or, heard of, or have the logic to say, whoa, whoa, wait. Then you have these little books in the schools uh, already 30 years ago. How do, you, how do you learn to say no to somebody who touches you? Mm. Leave those kids alone. Yeah. Give that to adults. Mm. It's just, I, I believe it's because we as adults don't like to take the responsibility for our actions. And that's what you kind of promote and that's what you're teaching yeah. them. And that's so important because that helps them to actually also heal. Yes. Yeah, because yes. they're broken too. Yeah. Yeah, and stop yeah. making our society going to hell. There are so many broken people. Mm. When I'm in a group and we are having dinner somewhere, you know, it was with Christmas last year. We were 12 people at the Christmas uh, breakfast. And well, it, it, start, it started about this and all that. And, and I said, okay, we have 12 people here. Who are the ones who have been abused? Ten hands went up. Ten. Ten from the 12 so I said to an, a friend of mine, a man, I said, we are a minority. Yeah. We have to ask for subsidies, but subsidies or uh, money because we are minorities. Mm-hmm. Everybody started to laugh, but the fact is it's on the table. Yeah. You would be amazed of the people who are abused as children. It is sickening mm-hmm. and it has to stop. And we can stop it from the upper uh, to the low. I mean, healing, healing. So you're, again, the whole child and then growing up. Uh, and we have to stop it from child level. Mm. Don't touch a child. Right. So we can solve it, yes. Mm. But, of course, we need a lot of people to carry this on the shoulders, start healing people, start healing themselves. Mm-hmm. And then we, have such, we will have such a beautiful society. Oh yeah. So I'm then looking forward we, to it. <laughs> yeah. But we have to we really have to do it. Uh so then you have what is the sympathy and empathy and then uh why did I do it again? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is for relapse offenders. Mm-hmm. Because each offender tell you I will never ever do this again. I, I swear. Uh but as soon as they have some problems and they can't cope with it. So in the training, you will see that we learn the therapist, the professional, to teach um, offenders how to cope with problems. Mm-hmm. 
and also their cycle of abuse. And it's very, very individual. For instance, um, it starts with, I don't feel well today. It's a lousy day. Then the fantasy starts. Then they have to be in the right mood. Because you can't just offend the child. You have to be in the right mood. So they are working towards that mood. The mm -hmm. right mood to offend the child. To do, yeah, to rape a child. Then they start arg having an argument with their partner. That partner often then says, oh, come on, go away. Leave me alone. I can't have this anymore. And then they go to a bar. Mm -hmm. Some drinks. Which lowers the, the brakes, of course. The, mm -hmm. Then they go out and they think somebody's going to pay for this. Somebody's going to pay for this. And then if you're the wrong person on the wrong place, he will attack you. And then you are already at the other side of the circle. Then the guilt starts. Uh, they, they, they start to say, yeah, but it was our fault. What did you do at nine in the evening with a short skirt outside alone? Excuses. And then it goes over and over, and then they are back to square one. And then it starts again. But they mm -hmm. don't know about this cycle. This is just one model of a cycle, but there are so many. Mm. Uh, sometimes it is because they lost a lot of money or they lost their job and nobody loves me. You know, mm. that kind of mood. Yeah. And but they can't observe gonna, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I often give the, the, because I have to bring this back to a level I can understand myself, you know, uh, because if you look like th to it like this, no, no. Well, then I think, okay, imagine I'm working hard for my boss. I'm doing overtime and he's, always just hacking on me it never is good it never is but you can't turn to your boss because then you lose your job with all the consequences and the negative spiral i won't be able to to pay my rent i won't be able to have food so it's building up it's building up then you, you take your car and you drive to yeah. home and you're yelling at everybody on the way because you're so fucked up you come home and you see this wonderful antique vase. You take it and you just throw it into the wall. It feels so good. It yeah. feels so good. Now, years later, you will say, oh, this was so, so sad. It was such an expensive vase. It was such a beautiful vase. But I felt so relieved. Mm. And that's what happening, what's happening with offenders. So you have to transport some of these issues mm -hmm. into your life on a level that you can handle. Mm -hmm. And it can be something completely different. It's just to feel the same emotions. And that is what's happening with serial rapists and rapists and child offenders. This is what is happening. It, it is not difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. Does it? Yeah, it's they just need to. A, yeah, to it's not acceptable. Else. That's yeah. something else. But yeah. uh, the, you, you first need an explanation. Why mm. do they do this? And how can we stop do, them doing this? And we can. Now, after this one, then you have uh, the tent model, and that's about a serial killer, a child killer. Um, mm. Based on a case I've been working on for years, I have thousands, thousand uh, written pages of him. He was in prison in France. They wanted to reinstore the death penalty because of the gruesome, gruesome things he did to these two little girls from, of eight years. Um, and it's based on, on my book. No, I based my book on my thesis for the American University. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was Le Victime de Victime, Victims of Victims, the ever returning cycles. Um, and then later on, I wrote the book Child Hunters Requiem of a Child Killer. But it's the only book on the planet 
tri again working around victims and offenders and the interaction between both. It's the only mm -hmm. way. And then they, when they finish this, there is the exam. Um, when they succeed, they have their diploma, they can start working. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a journey. Huh? Yeah. Intensive, yeah, yeah that's it's good. Intensive. Yeah, but they are not alone in this. So yes, that's and now the uni university, uh, the new University of New Mexico, uh, in the United States, asked me to give the training at their university, mm -hmm. their advisor for two departments, oh. two schools. Yes, mm, great. Because they like the very down to earth approach mm -hmm. with very very good results. Wow. Yeah, where was that again in? New Mexico. New Mexico. It's, mm -hmm. it's near Arizona, yeah. Texas. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's good. Well, congratulations for that. <laughs> Thank you. But I, I especially hope that as much people, you know, there are so many people from my age mm. doing nothing, being intelligent, uh, wanting to do something for others, but they don't know what. Yeah. Start your own healing business, but not healing, you know, I'm, I'm not against that, the spiritual healing, it's important. But in this, we need down-to-earth yeah. methods. Why don't you just engage? There is no age. Mm. Yeah, 21. You have to be 21. Yeah. And there is no gender, there is no age, you don't need a degree. You just need your heart on the right place. And help others. Yeah, Getting want to help. out of their misery, yes. Yeah, I hope that this interview inspire many, many people to sign up this training and really pass the training by you. So they will like it. Yeah, Absolutely. I think so they too. Like yeah. It. yeah, it's really a good thing to do. And what do you think? Why does child trauma continue to rotten inside the adult at all? Because it has been, it has not been treated. When from a child, from your childhood on. You hear things like you're, you're nothing, you're stupid. You know, this is an empty computer, a child. And you're programming it and it starts to act like this. And then it gets even more turned back and backlash. You see how bad you are? I mean, this, these are some tasks and, and tests I do with offenders and with also victims. Uh, they have to make a list of 10 of their good points, their good positive things. And then they have to make 10 of their minor good things or negative things. And each time you see that, especially when they are victims, the 10 of the negative side are filled in within minutes. But mm. then they start thinking, what good is in me? They have no clue. Then when you take the list of the 10 negative points and you challenge each point, for instance, I'm lazy. Okay. Why do you think I'm lazy? Well, you know, I'm busy all day, but at the end of the day, it still is a chaos. So you are not lazy. You are not good organized. Okay, let's start organizing things. In the morning, you take a piece of paper and you write down what you want to do. Then put it in, in the in range of importance, the most important and urgent first. And then you just put, okay, okay, okay. At the end of the day, it's all done. So it starts with you're lazy by being just not well organized. It's a big difference. Mm. And why do these people think I'm lazy? Because it has been set to them during their whole life. So you put everything right again. It's not that difficult. Mm. You just have to know how. Yeah, I think that's the point. And you have so many good keys to approach this all. Yes. So what do you think is the um, reason why society stayed in denial for such a long time regarding this topic at all? Oh, there are many reasons for that. For instance, there is the church, the influences of religions, do not talk about it. Um, there is uh, the organized crime behind all this. I once had a Jesuit who was uh, 
the founder of a very important uh, organization in Belgium here. And uh, he said to me, give me a child under the age of 12 and it is for always mine. And I was shocked by that. But it is true. As soon as these children under the age of 12 are confronted with um, their abuser, even if they are 50 years of age, they regress to the age of the abuse. So they can't confront them. That's why mm -hmm. some of them uh, go on in a confrontation with a younger child to get rid of their stress, doing the same things. So you have these circles coming back, coming back. Mm -hmm. um, there is, I'm, I'm saying this for 30 years, and now, now you start to see, indeed, this is organized. Yeah. To break people and make them your slave. Mm -hmm. That's why we have so little people left who are critical thinking. Mm. We see this now in this COVID thing. Uh, <laughs> it is so absurd. You know, we are in complete lockdown, in fact. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and everything, restu uh, restaurants are closed, shops mm. are closed. It's, it's terrible. But we have no death from flus anymore. The mm. flu... It's right. no cancer, anything. Mm. There is a tremendous amount of suicides, but we yeah. are not going to talk about it. Right. So you see that the, now you can start to see the revelation of what they have been working on for so many years. Mm. And you cannot look beside that anymore. No. And it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah, that's what I always say too. It Unfortunately, I believe yes. that's true, actually. Yeah. 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 <sighs> How do we respond to this disaster? What's your... No, it's not easy because I'm a rather strong personality and even I go down mm. at moments of, God, why does it take so long? Uh, but don't forget, we had the Weinstein case who opened mm. up the eyes of people. We had the Einstein game. Uh, I, yeah, Einstein, yeah. What a, Epstein game. Epstein, yeah. You have... Uh, Ten years ago, you had the abuses in the church for all the men yeah. who, after 60 years, finally, finally got some, some justice. Mm. And the most, the most they want is um, uh, recognition. That what they felt was right, it was wrong. Uh, and that what they told to their parents or whatever of where they went for help uh, was right, mm -hmm. and they did not get the help. Um, so there is a tremendous suppression on sexual abuse. And why? Because especially now, in the years we are now, 10 years ago and 20 years ago, if you were a minister and you were gay, you had to hide this. Because mm. You, you, you had not your place in politics. Uh, <clears throat> the same goes for lesbian women. You had to hide this. It was a scandal. It was a taboo. When you did adultery, you had to hide it because society would have corrected you. Uh, when you had orgies between uh, adults, you know, group sex, it was not appreciated at all. So you had to hide it. Now all these taboos has fallen, but mm. there's one standing, and that's sexual abuse of children. Yeah. It's the only uh, blackmail mm. possibility left. And why is it such a strong one? Because uh, anthropological uh, investigations and research has shown that it is inherent to human beings to reject the touching of a child, let alone raping of a child. Mm. They did uh, anthropological uh, investigations in tribes in the Central America and New Guinea, where tribes, you know, they're still making fire with two stones. Mm -hmm. When you touch a child in these tribes, the whole, the whole tribe will condemn you, which gives a tremendous backup to the child. Yeah. And also 
the offender is excluded of the tribe, could be for a year, two years, three years, it depends. The, the, the elderly decided about this. Now, surviving in the wild mm. as, as, a, as a soul being is very, very difficult. You need your tribe. Now, when they finished their uh, sentence, they were allowed back into the tribe and there was no stigmatization. Mm -hmm. So he could take his place back into the tribe. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And all this is gone, all this mm. is lost because it is used to blackmail people, especially in the highest levels. Mm -hmm. um, and now you can say why the highest levels, you know, most of the time, it, when do you reach the highest levels? If you have this in you, you want to be the highest, the richest, mm. the best. The, so, and then you walk on cadavers, on yeah. bodies. So it is also a bit in the character of somebody to go there and uh, their ego. So many people have problems with their ego. Mm. Instead of just being who you are, it's not that difficult. And as my father always said, do well and don't look back. Don't expect gratitude. Don't expect money. Don't expect to be, wow, on a piedestal. No, just do well and don't look back. Mm. Easy, isn't it? Just be authentic and kind, right? Yeah. But you don't always have mm. to be kind, you know. Sometimes you're allowed. Yeah, sometimes you're allowed to be loud. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> That's important. Yes. Yeah. That's and true. then, and then, one of the things that my mother always said was, um, "Examples awake you." Uh, I know words. I have to translate from Dutch. Yes. Uh, words awaken. Action. Uh, I have to find the right word because it's all in the words. Uh, examples lead you to do, do the same thing. Strecken, but I can't find the right synonym for it. So mm -hmm. you can say as much as you want, like all our politics do. It, it, it doesn't matter as mm -hmm. long as we see not deeds connected to what you are saying. Mm. So be an example mm -hmm. and do what you have to do yeah walk the talk right walk the talk that's the right that are the right words mm. yeah so i'm really happy to hear all of this especially to hear that you have this um program set up this training yes. that people really can get involved now so that's really really important and especially they can help heal our planet we need as much people yes. as possible but they have to be well trained they have to know mm. themselves know how they can handle all this they will be not left alone we have hundreds already even in bolivia mm -hmm. uh, everywhere over the planet who are working on this to bring our society back to a higher level. Very nice. Yes. It's so important now. Yes. I believe so too. <laughs> Thank you. I hope so. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, so now we're almost in the end of our interview and maybe mm -hmm. remember in the end we're always playing a little game with our okay. incomplete sentences. Are you Go up ahead. for it? <laughs> okay. All right. So the first one is victims need. And they need recognition for the fact that they have been victims. Offenders need a strong hand to keep them to keep them inside the lines and to uh, avoid them harming children. Healing from childhood trauma means starting life. In order to protect children, humanity has to take responsibility. Parents need to know that they have to take care of their own children. Governments want. Life is? Uh, the is is a difficult one. Um, <laughs> 
could be beautiful, I would say, but life is oh such a challenge. A challenge to do, to, to do the good things. It's a challenge. We can take it. I am. You are a brave woman, Aline. Because it is, I know it is very difficult for people like you having podcasts and, you know, rowing up the stream. <laughs> but it is thanks to people like you and so many others who are not doing this for money because you are not the ones earning money with it. It is the mainstream who is um, for telling lies, <laughs> mm. uh, uh, blunt out lies that you keep on going. You keep on going and you are the structures on which our truthful society will develop. So I am so thankful for people like you. <laughs> and no, I mean it. You. I really mean it. I feel that. Thank you. I wish I could. I wish I could... I could have helped all these victims that died during torturous rituals. Victims, little children who had nobody to turn to and were lost. I feel so sorry for you all that I was unable to help you. And I mean this too. This is sometimes I have nightmares of all the children who committed suicide adults who couldn't live with their victimship anymore because they couldn't talk to anyone and they felt so hurt who committed suicide uh, whether they'd been killed or committed suicide it doesn't matter they are not here anymore while they had the right to a good decent and safe life and we as adults were unable to give it to them and I'm not even talking about governments who should have taken responsibility and still does, but I don't believe it anymore. They will never do it. Uh, to, to give the love a child deserves, the encouragement a, a child needs. It's their food, it's their water, it's their everything. Then we would have a complete planet on a much higher level of peace, and love, it sounds from my mouth, mouth maybe a bit sugary, but <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. So bring Christ back in our life. Mm. Bring Christ back. The norms, the good, and the critical mind, bring it back. I don't need to go to church. I mean... You feel that church inside yourself, you know what is good. Even those who commit bad, they know what is good and bad. But they choose to do bad. Well, we have to choose to do good. And for God's sake, stop being cowards. Do what you have to do. You know what that is. Yeah. I don't have to tell you. You all know what that is. And do it. I would never betray someone. No. For the future, I wish. I wish I could live long enough, or maybe that's possible, to <laughs> see everything changing. It, seeing the, the evil collapse, seeing on the ruins of that justice being done for all those who, has, who have uh, lived in justice. Oh yes, that's something absolutely I hope to, to live long enough to see that. Yes. Love is? Everything. It is not always easy to love somebody who is unlovable, <laughs> but give it a try. And now, Karin, if you would have the opportunity to send out a message to every person on this planet, what would that message be? 
Oh, that's a difficult one. It's, it's an easy one and a difficult one. In, in the actual situation where we are in now, maybe there is one... Um, wait a minute. The ultimate ignorance is the rejection of something you know nothing about <laughs> and yet refuse to investigate. This is something I would say to the world in our actual situation. Mm. People are judging, judging and always judged about things they don't nothing about and based on that conviction they don't even investigate uh, if they are on the right path or not mm. this is what my job is about truth but to find the truth sometimes you have to get out of your share and go and look for it be it that the stories the victims tell, because sometimes victims tell false stories, <laughs> uh, or be it uh, the offender telling lies, or being the media telling lies, or being friends telling lies. You know, gossip is a social, is social action. People gossip, and that's not bad. It becomes bad when it becomes lies. And since I was a child, very, very young, I knew, I don't know how I knew, but I knew that the lie is the biggest sin. Mm -hmm. And look what we're in now. Yeah. It's all a lie. How do you want a society to function if you can't trust one another? Mm. How? Yeah, impossible. No, it's not possible anymore. No. No, there is manipulation and lie, and I'm wondering... Uh, how I will get along with the people who are uh, co-responsible for the fact that we are with our feet on a cliff to fall down. Mm. So many people try to wake them up and they don't even do the effort to, could this be true? Mm. Could, this be, could this be real, an elite, a cabal? They don't even make that effort and they judge. My God, if all my expertise would just be on me judging mm. the person in front of me, many innocent people would be in jail. Yeah. Believe me. We cannot afford that. Go to the end to find the truth and destroy the lie. And that's where you and your program and Bruno all play a very important role. If we did not have that, we were already in gulag camps. We already had Stalinism. Yes, we did. Yeah. And I will not bow. I prefer to kill myself than mm. go in a Stalinistic, Stalinistic system. I will not. Mm. And this is not an emotional reaction. I just know I will not do it. Yeah. So I have to kill myself. And I, will. I hope not. I hope I, not that I'm it will get so far, but I understand what you're meaning. Yeah, I'm not afraid to die. We are not that important. That's true. Yeah. So, no, if it is about ego, I'm sorry, I don't have one, so I can't <laughs> suffer from it, really. <laughs> That's good. That's helpful. That's why you can do what you're doing. A great yeah. job. And thank you so much, Karin, for your insights, for your expertise, and especially for creating this training where we can all participate and yeah. make a difference in this world. Yeah. So thank you so much. I thank hope many, many people will be inspired by this interview and your words and mm -hmm. sign up on your webpage for your training and get really actively involved. That's what we have to do right now. Yeah. It's our responsibility to change the things the way they are right now. So thank Absolutely. you so much. And you, thank you so much for your professional approach, but especially your human approach <laughs> in all these subjects and for the chance to get messages out. I'm so grateful. 
You're very welcome. Thank okay. you. Thank you very well. <laughs> hope to hear you soon. Yes, I hope to okay. hear you soon too. Well, okay. your viewers at home, thank you for watching and your attention. If you like this interview, please hit the like button. If you would like to stay up to date, please subscribe to our channel. And we say thank you for your support. Until next time, much love from Switzerland. Liebe Alin, erzähl uns doch etwas über den Bewusstseinsflug. Der Bewusstseinsflug, das ist unser neuestes Projekt, das wir vor ein paar Wochen gestartet haben. Das ist eine riesen Plattform rund ums Thema Bewusstseinsforschung und Spiritualität, wo du tolle Beiträge findest, sowohl in Schriftform wie auch in Videoformat. Zum Beispiel haben wir Rubriken wie Live on Stage, wo du uns in voller Action erleben kannst. Wir haben aber auch Rubriken wie ähm, die Texte, die ja, Teachings. Die Teachings genau. ja, da hast du Texte ohne Ende zum Studieren. Dann gibt es noch andere mhm. äh, Möglichkeiten, nämlich die Insights. Ein heißer Tipp von mir. In Insights, da beantwortet Bruno bzw. forscht Bruno in seinen Büchern, erläutert Textpassagen und geht tiefer. Und liest zwischen den Zeilen. Liest zwischen den Zeilen, ja. das geht nämlich auch. Genau. Und weil wir wirklich das Gefühl haben, dass es dir genauso geht wie uns, dass du nämlich das Gefühl hast, hier auf der Erde einen Auftrag zu erfüllen oder erfüllen zu wollen. Wenn wir dich unterstützen dürfen, dann herzlich gerne. In unserem Vlog fehlt aber auch der Humor nicht, oder? Nein, und wir haben nämlich auch noch den Bereich Q&A in unserem Vlog, wo wir deine spezifischen Fragen beantworten in einem Video. Wow, das ist ja schon unglaublich viel, aber das ist noch lange nicht alles. Mhm. Wir zeigen dir nämlich in der Rubrik Diverses auch ein paar Videos, die wir nicht so veröffentlichen, weil sie uns peinlich sind, <lacht> oder? Ja. Aber dir muten wir es zu. Weißt du, so Videos, wenn die Aline mich überrascht oder wenn ich sie überrasche, entweder beim Kochen oder beim Staubsaugen oder was auch immer wir gerade machen, du kannst dann bei uns reinschauen und meistens haben wir auch gleichzeitig einen ziemlich guten Tipp für dich dabei. Mhm. Du bist also sozusagen Backstage mit dabei. <lacht> Live dabei bei uns die Hai, wie wir in der Schweiz sagen. Also, wenn du das Gefühl hast, du könntest bei uns ein bisschen was profitieren, fühl dich frei und komm zu uns in den Bewusstseinsvlog unter www.bewusstsein-vlog.com Und schon sehen wir uns wieder. <lacht> wir freuen uns auf ja. dich. Bis dann. <lacht> Bis dann. Ciao. Tschüss.